everyone. I'd like to introduce Heather Barnes Good morning, Tina. and Lynn Rosenfeld. Good morning, everyone. And Rob and Helen Jackson, they're at the back um, recording for us. And I'm Reverend Tina and we're going to be bringing you today's worship. So may you be blessed by the worship um, and today's theme is God's love and ours. We begin with an acknowledgement. We acknowledge those who were here before us, the first inhabitants of this place. We honour them for their custodianship of the land on which we gather today. Now, today's call to worship has responses which are in bold and we'll begin with the response. Shout to joy for the Lord. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful songs. And with the prayers of adoration, invocation and confession, we also have responses. Lord our God, we are wondrously made by you. We are your beloved children and you love us with an everlasting love. We belong to you. We tell the world of your love for all of us. Shout for joy to the Lord. Worship the Lord with gladness and come before him with joyful songs. Jesus, our Lord, we depend on you. You are always there for us. We live in you and you live in us. You walk with us, you guide us and you fill us with peace. You bless and you comfort us. Shout for joy to the Lord, worship the Lord with gladness, come before him with joyful songs. Holy Spirit, you live within our hearts, filling us with love, calming our fears and leading us on with hope, closer to God. You fill us with courage to keep on following Jesus through all times. Shout for joy to the Lord, Worship the Lord with gladness and come before him with joyful songs. 
And we just pause for a moment before we have the lovely hymn, Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You. Our confession today is a moment of silence before God where we bring all that's on our hearts to you, Lord. Hear then Jesus Christ's words of grace to us. Your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Now the hymn is, Brother, Sister, Let Me Serve You. first reading this morning is taken from the book of Psalms, Psalm 100. Make a joyful noise to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come into his presence with singing. Know that the Lord is God. It is he that made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Give thanks to him. Bless his name. For the Lord is good. His steadfast love endures forever and his faithfulness to all generations. A second reading is taken from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 13, verses 8 to 14. Owe no one anything except to love one another, for the one who loves another has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and any other commandment are summed up in this word, love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no wrong to a neighbour, therefore 
love is the fulfilling of the law. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the moment for you to wake from sleep. For salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us live honourably as in the day, not in revelling and drunkenness, not in debauchery and licentiousness, not in quarrelling and jealousy. Instead, put on the Lord Jesus Christ and make no provision for the flesh to gratify its desires. And our third reading this morning is taken from the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 18, verses 15 to 20. If another member of the church sins against you, go and point out the fault when the two of you are alone. If the member listens to you, you have regained that one. But if you are not listened to, take one or two others along with you, so that every word may be confirmed by the evidence of two or three witnesses. If the member refuses to listen to them, tell it to the church. And if the offender refuses to listen even to the church, let such one be to you as a Gentile and a tax collector. Truly, I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Again, truly, I tell you, if two of you agree on earth about anything you ask, it will be done for you by my Father in heaven. For where two or three are gathered in my name, I am there among them. We now join in singing our next hymn, My Jesus, My Saviour.
Now my story for the young at heart today comes from um, two kings and I've adapted it. Um, it's quite humorous. I've always liked this story. So four lepers are sitting outside a city gate and the city's under siege. And they say to one another, what are we doing sitting here at death's door? If we go into this famine struck city that's under siege, we'll die. If we stay here, we're going to die. So let's take our chances in the camp of the Aram, who was the, the king that was in trying to um, break into the city. And let's throw ourselves on their mercy. You know, like, um, and so they say, well, if they receive us, we'll live. But if they kill us, we'll die. So we've got nothing to lose. So why not? So after the sun went down, they got up and they went to this camp of Aram. It didn't take them long to realise the camp had been abandoned. At first they panicked and they ran. Then they changed their mind and they went back to the camp and into the tents and they ate all the food and they drank. Um, then they decided to grab some silver and gold and some clothing and they went and hid it somewhere. Then they came back and they went into another tent and they found some more things like um, gold, and um, they went and hid that too. Then they said to one another, do you think we should go and tell them, you know, in the city that um, the camp doesn't have anyone in it? It's been, you know, like they've all abandoned it. Um, they might like the food and they might like the, some of the things that have been left behind. Um, hmm. So they went and told everyone, and the story goes on. But it's just that little bit about the lepers weighing up you know, their options. It's quite a, I think it's quite amusing. And I think it's a story that's relevant at the moment when there's so many people in the world that are under siege from COVID-19 and they're facing starvation and homelessness. Um, in third world countries, there'd be people that would be the equivalent of day labourers in Jesus's time and depended on work. Well, they don't have work. So I don't know how they're surviving and how their families are surviving because they can't travel to their place of employment. They can't travel to anywhere where they would employ them for a day. And even in Western nations, there's um, poverty and um, there's people that are out of work and there's people that are um, needing to be fed, especially in Mitcham area and the city centre. There's a lot of homeless a lot of international students that are receiving hampers during this time with the police's help, and they're being fed. So there's poverty in our backyard. So if we want to get through this time, we need to find a way to share what we have with those who have nothing, um, those who are under siege from COVID-19 and who are starving. They're hungry. Something to ponder about. So we have that lovely picture of the mountains up near um, Mount Hotham. In the name of the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now, uh, Lorraine Grant told me a good story about her brother, Alan. Um, he's in Benalla and he's works with um, a whole lot of volunteers involved with Blaze Aid. It, they, uh, it's an organisation that helps out families and individuals in rural Australia after things like fires and floods. And so um, he helps rebuild fences that have been burnt down after the fires. So recently when, well of course we've got the COVID-19 restrictions are in place, um, he was travelling along the freeway to Corriong in Victoria and suddenly he realised he missed the turn off. Um, he ended up in New South Wales and um, you know someone stopped him and said well where's your permit? And Alan just went no, no I'm not going to have a bar of this. He insisted on saying he'd missed the turn off um, and he was of course explaining why he was there, he wanted to rebuild someone's fence and he'd been doing this work for months so how he missed the turn off was anybody's guess. But then uh, the police arrived and um, one of the policemen was very helpful and um, he said, well, I'll sort out the problem. And the result was Alan was told to go to the crossing between the freeways and turn on the truck's hazard lights and wait. So he did that. 
Then moments later, the policeman drove up to Alan saying, stick close behind me. And then he put his flashing police car lights on and led on Alan following behind and off they went back to Victoria and then Helen went off to finish um, doing the fencing job. So it's a good story, you know, like, um, yeah, there's a lot of people out there, a lot of volunteers that are doing a lot of very loving things to help out people and people are still finding it tough after the fires and now they've got COVID and there's businesses that are um, experiencing difficulties. So in today's readings, Paul said, hold fast to the rule of love. Well, I guess he's making the point that love is everywhere. You only have to really look around you. You know, like um, it's what knits us together. If we look back over our life and remember all the love we've received, we'd probably say, what a life, what a good life. And why would this change for me? And there's so much more love to give and receive. And giving is just as important as receiving love. Those who reach out in love need their love affirmed and valued and treasured. And those who receive love, well, they grow in love. So this mutual love is what makes the world go round. Now, I've got this photo. Um, it's a group of people from Temple Stowe Uniting, and they're standing up um, on a hill at Pilate College, just below a cross, and they're looking down over the valley below them. And this is at Pilotta College, Milgrave, where we used to go for a lot of retreats because I used to belong to Temple Stowe Uniting before it became Manningham Churches. Now, when I first went to um, Temple Stowe Uniting, which was a long time ago, um, and I worshipped with the congregation, um, my heart burned. You know, and um, I soon found out why. You know, several people told me the story about one of their ministers who stayed for 20 years. You know, he was travelling to Templestowe Uniting to be inducted with his young daughter when he was involved in a car accident. Now, his daughter was okay, she was um, uninjured, but he ended up a paraplegic. And so the congregation wanted him to be their minister. So what they did was in, they changed the entire worship space within the church. It used to, all, all the pews used to face towards this big window and they had the table, you know, in front of the window. And what they did was they moved it all around. The Lord's table went to the, the right side of the church um, and they put the cross on the wall there and they moved all the pews around um, to a semicircle around the table and they put wheelchair ramps going up to each side of the table and then they recarpeted the entire church and they changed the entrance to the church. So time passed. I mean, he was there for 20 years. And um, as I got to know everyone when I first settled in there, they were always saying he taught us how to love. And I'm, I heard people speak about how he received a lot of love too from congregational members. So again, it's this mutual transformative love that was happening between everyone. And of course, there's many ways of showing love. You know, like um, I guess people learnt that. You know, for us, we can, we can try and be a peacemaker. And I've put in the, um, the written materials the, the link to Susan Boyle singing Make Me a Channel of Your Peace. And that's quite a lovely song. And, you know, a lot of us probably know about love from 1 Corinthians, the favourite wedding song that speaks of um, the kindness and patience involved with love. And I'm sure many churches in, in body and in revealed the many faces of love because God is love. And of course, if God is working for us, we're going to show the world God's love. And today's gospel is talking about the church where we are embodying God's love. And it's also talking about what is church, you know, where two or three people are gathered together, that's a church. So I've included the song also for in the um, written materials about um, the, I am the church, and there's a, there's, there is a recording of it, of it too. Um, so we can ponder about, well, what is a church during times of COVID-19 when we can't come together and worship? You know, it's a, it's a gathering of people who embody and express God's love, speak of God's love to the world and the faithfulness of God in our lives and our, our love for God. But it's, and, and in many ways, uh, this love is Trinitarian because we get to know of God's love through God and through Jesus and through the Holy Spirit. And we've got this commandment of love. 
about loving God with all our being and our others as ourselves. And of course, I like from John's letter, you know, like, um, I think it's um, chapter four, if we have God in us, we have love in us. And if we have love in us, we have God in us. It's a, it's a lovely way of putting it. So God loved us so much, he sent Jesus to be amongst us. And Jesus is our Emmanuel, and we are his brothers and sisters. So that means we're his heart, his voice, his hands and feet in the world. And what's more is we learnt from Jesus, you know, of his love for us, where he laid down his life for us. And he taught us how to lay down our lives by the giving of ourselves, our resources and our time to one another. That is the same as us laying down our lives. And that makes us the body of Christ and the love of Jesus in the world. Now, talking about church again, Jesus said, where two or three people are gathered together in my name, I am there amongst them. Now, some of us might be alone at the moment. So we could, can call on Jesus and he can come and be with us and present to us and suddenly there is two of us. We can phone someone up and we can pray with them and suddenly there's two of us and Jesus is also present. We may also be two or three and we can call on Jesus to be with us and present to us and suddenly there's a small group gathered together with Jesus. All this is the church during these times and the church does come in many sizes but most of all the church is about the loving presence of Jesus with us. Now, I always like this image of, it's a heart made out of seaweed on Mount Martha Beach. And I, I, when I walked down the beach, I saw this lady with a big smile on her face. She just finished making it. She must have taken hours making it. And, well, perhaps she wanted to express the love in her heart and celebrate it, celebrate all the love in her life. You know, like, it's a lovely gesture for everyone to enjoy. But if we get back to the Trinitarian expression of God's love well the Holy Spirit moves in us to express God's love like the lady who made the crop the um, beautiful heart on the beach it's you know Romans talks about God's love being poured into our hearts and that love grows it transforms it blesses and it moves us to act with love so every morning most of us would like to start our day with prayer and it's like putting on the armor of light we're putting on Christ and we're becoming aware of how we are in Christ and Christ is in us. And it makes our day. And we can come to know how the Spirit moves in our hearts and moves us to reach out with love through our prayers. And how we dwell in this love through all the things that we do. How we live together, how we love others as ourselves. Now it all reminds me of Robert. Now Robert was intellectually challenged. Um, he was... He's, um, he's loved by his congregation that he belongs to, and he loved them. And without fail, every Sunday he would walk from his shared care home to church with his footy gear on. He had a favourite football team. And he was always seen to be aware of people when they were suffering or needed prayer. He had a hard time. He just had this sensitivity. And so whenever we had our candle prayers, he would light candle prayers for all of them. Sometimes 10 prayers, you know, 10 candles, 10 prayers. Another person known as Dorothy, she was a lifetime elder at Templestowe Uniting, now Manningham Churches. Well, she spent her life praying for others and writing prayers and saying prayers at meetings. And um, she raised a family. She was an artist. I'm going to have to have a drink of water, excuse me. <coughs> hay fever. <coughs> Don't worry, it's not COVID. <coughs> oh, just give me a moment. My goodness, I get a very dry throat when I take Telfast. <clears throat> okay, <clears throat> just give me a minute. Now with Dorothy, um, 
I think she lived to about 100. And towards the end, she became very weary. But she continued to pray. She never lost hope. She was always praying for her church. And her background was she was an artist and orchardist. She had beautiful, the Orman family, you know, I think you probably know, have heard of um, the Orman family. They're pretty amazing. Anyway, um, after she passed away, we heard about, we heard more stories about her love for others. We even heard that she'd been an elder with the Aboriginal community and that she had a possum cloak. So this is one person's life that speaks of God's love. And I hope my voice comes good in a minute. <clears throat> so, another, if you look at children or, and elderly people, you see people are so transparent um, that it seems as if we begin with no barriers and <clears throat> we end with no barriers between, you know, being able to be transparent and show God's love. Um, you know, a lot of elderly people like to become playful, you know, like children. There's lots of traditions in Asian countries where elderly people, once they retire, are invited to play. There's a lovely one in Japan. Um, so, yes, I think as I'm getting older with the grandchildren, I'm learning to play and enjoy them. And so I was really touched when I saw Jubilee, who's a member of this congregation, dancing in front of the, um, just dancing there in front of, you know, like the lectern and the... Um, the Lord's table, and her eyes were closed and her face looked very peaceful as she danced. And perhaps those who were watching, like myself, would have considered her dance as her expression of her love for God. You know, she was embodying God's love. And, and perhaps, like me, others would have felt drawn into that love of God. You know, liturgical dancing, um, especially by children, is a wonderful offering up to a congregation. We should encourage it. We should encourage children and people of all ages to dance their faith because um, there's many ways of expressing God's love and singing, dancing, um, prayers. You know, they're a wonderful expression of that. I'll just go back. Um, so... Just look around you at other people and how they express their love. Look at paintings, listen to music, watch a movie or a YouTube and you'll see expressions of love. Or read your Bible or devotional in the morning and look at your pets and consider their unconditional love for you. It's, it's all, love is all around us. Um, so I invite you to count your blessings as you ponder on what the gospel is saying to you today. The Lord be with you. And of course it's appropriate to have a lovely hymn, Love Divine, to follow um, our reflection on the gospel. Come, Almighty, to deliver. 
I'll just take my mask off for a minute. Oh, I'm glad I've recovered from the experience of coughing. Oh my goodness. Um, so we're going to say the offering prayer together and we offer up ourselves to God. So Lord and giver of every good thing, we bring to you our lives and gifts for your kingdom, all for transformation for your grace and love, made known in Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Now we're going to have the prayers of the people led by Heather Barnes. Gracious and loving God, although we are unable to gather together, we come before you this morning to bring you our cares and concerns in the prayers of the people. Today in the World Prayer Cycle, we are remembering the African Republics of Ghana and Nigeria. The first Europeans arrived in Ghana in the 15th century and commenced a trade in slaves. During this colonial period, cocoa was introduced and became the backbone of the economy. Independence was achieved in 1957, but political unrest has been a continuing problem, along with health issues. The northern parts of the country are prone to drought while environmental problems include deforestation, overgrazing and inadequate water supplies. Nigeria was created by an amalgamation of several British colonies in 1914. Since then, many violent coups have occurred and the Republic has an extremely poor human rights record. Even with its rich oil resources, there is great inequality in the distribution of wealth. And Nigeria remains one of the poorest countries in the world. Many areas struggle with the problems of urbanisation, such as overcrowding, crime, unemployment, corruption and housing shortages. Disease and malnutrition are common. Dear Lord, we uphold the peoples of Ghana and Nigeria before you and pray for a more equal distribution of wealth and power, an end to human rights abuses and better health care for all. Heavenly Father, your whole world is experiencing an unprecedented health emergency. We ask for your guiding hand for all the world leaders along with those in positions of responsibility. May they lead and act wisely and fairly. Give us the grace, dear Lord, to play our part by being kind, considerate and cooperative. In the ecumenical prayer cycle this morning, we're remembering the priest and congregation of our neighbourhood Catholic Church of St John's. Be with them all as they seek to serve the Mitchin community in your name. In the Uniting Church, our prayers are with the Lilydale and Montrose congregation, and also with the chaplaincy ministry at the Lord Smith Animal Hospital. May your love shine through the words and actions <clears throat> of your people in these communities. Here at Mount View, we ask for our minister, Reverend Tina Linden, guide and keep her safe and in good health as she works amongst, amongst us in these difficult times. Dear Lord, we ask for your blessings on those who are sorrowing, suffering health or family problems, or struggling with major decisions. We name them now silently in our hearts. May they know 
your comfort and peace. Heavenly Father, gather into this humble prayer the prayers of all your people in the world, that your peace, your justice and your mercy will enfold us and enable us to live as one. We pray together the prayer you taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins and we forgive those who sin against us. Save us for the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We shall now take the opportunity to light some prayer candles. off. So this candle's for all the dads for, for Father's Day throughout the world. Um, some of them are really having a difficult time um, if they've lost their jobs or um, a difficult time working from home and trying to care for all the family and if there's a whole lot of children being homeschooled. So it's very challenging time, so that's for all the dads. And this is for, um, for everyone, really, We're, that we can see the, the presence of Jesus with us and or in other people, um, that we, we're able to, our hearts are able to go out to one another where we can love each other. And that we try and find some humour in the situation because um, it is dragging on a bit and we just hope tomorrow that we, it's not going to be an extra two weeks because the numbers are not right down yet. Um, and we may, like the people in Europe, have to live with um, COVID. They're just getting used to it and making it a way of life at the, until there's a vaccine. So that's a prayer for all of us and hopefully we do see some funny movies or some... Try and have some fun like a child, um, even do a little dance. Um, you know, I've seen, I, I look on Facebook and um, some of my friends are re resorting to dancing and recording it and putting it on YouTube, which is very interesting. Um, and, and this is a, a prayer for all of the employees of Virgin Airlines. Um, they have to make up their mind, including my husband this week, whether to take the redundancy because it's been cut right back. So that's my husband because he's got Father's Day tomorrow too. and. He can't be with everyone, so I'm going to get him a box of goodies um, to cheer him up. So we'll have to be very creative for Father's Day this year and possibly even Christmas. And this is for everyone in the congregation who's really doing it tough, is really hurting and um, finding it, you know, the limitations on their bot with their bodies is, is 
a bit of a downer during this time. That you can stop for a moment and pray whenever you feel like you're um, at the end of your tether um, and turn to God and find some comfort. Don't let, don't let yourself be dragged down. Uh, but this is also to give thanks for all our blessings. Some good things are you know, happening every day. And like the latest one is Spoonville. You know, that's pretty amazing that people could create something like Spoonville. <laughs> um, and I'm still finding rainbows on the footpath and teddy bears in windows and that. The children are maintaining hope for the adults. So I'm giving thanks um, for that. It, it's a wonderful gift to us, to all of us. And I hope I don't have a coughing fit. I'm only human. Many thanks for Aileen for setting up for us today. So you're invited, brothers and sisters in Christ, to come to this, this table. And um, if you have your bread and your wine with you at the moment, um, to give thanks for this sacred feast and come not because you're strong, but because you're weak, like all of us. We're all weak. So come not because of any goodness of your own, but because you need mercy and help from the Lord. Come because you love the Lord a little and would like to love him more. Come because he loves you and gave himself for you. So the eternal God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift our hearts to God. Let us give thanks to God who is wisdom and love. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is always right in all times and all places to give thanks to God, holy wisdom and eternal love. Holy, life-giving God, we offer you our thanks and praise in wonder and awe, in delight and astonishment, for you are the creator of all things and the lover of each one. You sculpted the planets and you set the stars on fire, you moulded Uulu and shaped the ways of the Murray Darling. You imagined the echidna into being and set the brogas dancing. And you made the great beasts of the oceans just for the pleasure of them. And you called forth human beings that we might love and care for your creation as you do. The rainbow and the law are signs of your promise to protect the earth and your covenant with the people who called to witness to the nations. When we fail to honour your work and your being, your word of wisdom, enter creation as Jesus, to share with us the joy and pain of our humanity. So through Christ, life rises from despair. In Christ, all things are made new. And because of Christ, your spirit remains with us. So as she once brooded over the waters of the deep, your spirit now works through creation, preparing for the day when all things find their purpose in you. Therefore, with the whole creation and with your people gathered across time and space and with all the works of your hands, with everything visible and invisible, imagined and unimaginable, we sing in thanks and praise. Holy, 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 God, holy God, God, wisdom, strength, strength and, hope. and hope. Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of our Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is Jesus, wisdom embodied, who feasted with sinners, disciples, friends, and now shares this meal in our midst. So that on the night before Jesus died, on the evening of betrayal, Jesus took bread and gave thanks and he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in memory of me. In the same way, he also took the cup after supper and saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in memory of me. 
So as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, we proclaim the coming of God's new creation in and through the life, death and resurrection of Jesus and finally in the completion of all things when Christ comes again. So we say Christ has died, Christ is risen and Christ will come again. Lord our God, send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts in creation so they can be the gift of recreation in Christ. Shape us into one body, press us into one wine, bake us into one bread, the bread of life and the cup of liberation for the feeding of all your children and the nurture of creation. So we say, through Christ, Christ, with Christ, Christ, in Christ, in in the power of the spirit spirit of love, all All glory glory be to you, O God, God, source of all being, eternal eternal wisdom and the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as As it was was in the beginning, beginning, is now, now, and and ever shall be. be. Amen. Amen. So if you all have your bread, please join in. Christ is the bread of life. Food for healing and wholeness. Christ is the cup of hope. Wellspring of resurrection life. The gifts of God for the people of God. May we who share these gifts be found in Christ and Christ in us. body and the blood of Christ keep us all in eternal life. Amen. We finish with a prayer. Most gracious God, you have made us one with all your people in heaven and on earth. You have fed us with the bread of life and renewed us for your service. Now we give of ourselves to you and ask that our daily living may be part of the life of your kingdom. May our love be your love, reaching out into the life of the world through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now the dismissal is, and I'd like to invite um, um, Helen and, sorry, I've forgotten, um, Heather, sorry, Heather and Lynn to join us. My goodness, a senior moment. (laughs) We do have to have humour during the service. It does need to be uplifting. (laughs) Come a little bit closer. So thank you for your ministry today. Um, and um, Rob and Helen at the back. Sorry, Helen, that I called you. Heather, you. <laughs> um, so it's been a wonderful time to gather together with God, and I hope everyone who's been a part of this service is blessed. Now, our dismissal is go out into the world in the power of the Spirit and all things at all times. Remember, Christ is with you. Make your life your worship to the praise and glory of God. Amen and have a wonderful week, and we'll see you next month. And we have Shalom to you now, being sung by Helen.